is the real change which must give to people throughout the world their human rights is must come about in the hearts of people we must want our fellow human beings to have rights and freedom eleanor roosevelt is known as the first lady of the world and for a good reason she completed numerous achievements in her 12 years as first lady revolutionary accomplishments that no first lady before her had done Eleanor Roosevelt set a tone for the First Lady to have a more active role and to stand for more than the President's wife. Eleanor Roosevelt was born on October 11th in 1884 in New York City to Elliot and Anna Roosevelt. The Roosevelt family was a set political family. However, Eleanor Roosevelt felt hardship early on in life as both parents passed on before she was 10 years old, leaving her in the hands of her grandmother. Roosevelt was sent to London's Allenwood Academy in 1889, where she met Mademoiselle Marie Suvestra, a teacher who encouraged her to find an interest in social and political issues. She had a profound impact on Eleanor Roosevelt's future role in politics as an advocate for the less fortunate. After she left the academy, Roosevelt went back to New York and began working in the social scale of things in 1902. Once there, Roosevelt's work consisted of settle homes and teaching immigrant families. In 1905, Roosevelt married Franklin D. Roosevelt, a distant cousin of hers. In 1913, the Roosevelt family moved to Washington, D.C. as Franklin Roosevelt joined Woodrow Wilson's administration. Eleanor Roosevelt began to grow her political knowledge once she moved there by helping with various aid reliefs during World War I, which increased her visibility to the public. After women were granted the right to vote in 1920, Eleanor Roosevelt began to promote women in politics. She became active in many political organizations such as the League of Women's Voters and the Women's Trade Union League. Eleanor Roosevelt also became the leader of the Women's Division of the Democratic National Committee in 1928. In 1921, Franklin Roosevelt contracted polio and was paralyzed. While this was devastating news for the Roosevelt family, it allowed Eleanor Roosevelt to become more vocal and active in politics. Despite his condition, Eleanor Roosevelt encouraged her husband to continue his work in politics. By 1928, he was elected governor of New York, and then in 1932, the president of the United States. By this time, the nation was experiencing the devastating impacts of the Great Depression. Eleanor Roosevelt was supportive of her husband, but worried about losing her independence and freedom as First Lady, a precedent that had been set by previous First Ladies. However, Eleanor Roosevelt would end up revolutionizing the role of First Lady as she made numerous accomplishments throughout her husband's four terms as president. Eleanor Roosevelt connected to American citizens more than any First Lady before her. She wrote in a newspaper column, My Day, in which she wrote about her daily life as the First Lady. She also had another newspaper column titled, I Want You to Write to Me, where she answered questions sent to her by the public. She also had radio shows, made about 1,400 speeches, and published more books than any previous First Lady. Despite that, all that she had accomplished, Eleanor Roosevelt's active role was met with criticism and she was ridiculed by the media. However, this did not stop her from remaining an active voice in politics. One of Eleanor Roosevelt's main focuses was gender equality. As president, her husband had developed the New Deal, several programs established to aid Americans during the Great Depression. She was a great influence in her husband's decisions surrounding the New Deal and who would be in his cabinet as she tried to get more women involved in politics. She, held, she helped appoint women to leadership positions in the New Deal programs. She also felt that women were neglected in these programs, so she helped them to expand many New Deal programs such as the Civil Works Administration and the Federal Emergency Relief Administration to offer more aid to unemployed women. Eleanor Roosevelt also influenced her husband to appoint more women into his cabinet. As a result, Frances Perkins was selected to serve as the Secretary of Labor, becoming the first woman appointed to the U.S. cabinet. She also wanted to give women more opportunities in the workplace. 
During World War II, she advocated for women's involvement in the work ef- war effort through jobs, and she promoted equal pay and investigated signs of discrimination in the workplace. She held weekly press conferences for women reporters with the aim of helping women journalists to keep their jobs and appeal to more of her female audience. Eleanor Roosevelt was a big advocate for civil rights as well. She received a lot of attention for her activism. For example, when Eleanor Roosevelt visited Howard University, an African-American school, she was led by two honor guards and asked for this picture to be taken. The image was controversial, and it was only one of the many ways in which the First Lady stood for equal rights. She also appointed Mary McLeod Bethune, an African-American woman, to the National Advisory Committee of the National Youth Organization. Bethune would become an important advisor to the president. Eleanor Roosevelt was the first white resident of Washington, D.C. to become a member of the National Association for the Advancements of Colored People, or the NAACP, and the National Urban League. In 1939, she stepped down as a member of the Daughters of the American Revolution when it was revealed to hold racist ideologies, which again caused controversy. Then, during World War II, she urged her husband to pass the Fair Employment Practices Commission, which banned discrimination in the defense industry and desegregated the armed forces. Eleanor Roosevelt was also very concerned about those who were affected by the Great Depression. She witnessed the devastating impacts of the economy on a community in West Virginia. Many faced unemployment and lived in poor conditions. In response, she led a resettlement project in Arthurdale, where a new community would be constructed. She helped provide quality houses, a hospital, and a school in the community. This led to the development of other resettlement projects as a part of the New Deal. Even after her husband's death in 1945, Roosevelt remained politically active. Roosevelt was appointed to be a delegate to the United Nations in 1946 and served in that position for more than a decade. She assisted in the writing of the 1948 United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. Another one of Roosevelt's most important projects in her late life was with her work uh, with supporting the Wiltwick Boys Wiltwick School for Boys. This was a school for African American boys who had been abandoned by their families. Roosevelt saved the school from closure due to a lack of funding by making it a private school. However, Roosevelt faced criticism from the public and her family. Eleanor Roosevelt lived a great life in which she accomplished so much and she changed what it meant to be the First Lady. November 7, 1962, Eleanor Roosevelt died in Hyde Park, New York, but her legacy as First Lady of the world lives on.